Hi there, and welcome to Equitably Speaking, a podcast series that teaches mortgage professionals how to expand their business by closing more loans for minority homeowners in underserved communities. I am your host, Monda Raquel Webb, Affordable Lending Manager with Admission and Community Engagement in the Freddie Mac Single Family Acquisitions Division. Day by day, I manage Freddie Mac HUD-approved housing counseling agencies nationwide who focus on closing the homeownership gap for borrowers with low and very low to moderate incomes. I'm also a realtor and realtist licensed since 2003 in Maryland and the District of Columbia. It's more than a privilege to help mortgage professionals address the persistent housing challenges facing borrowers in underserved communities. Today's guest is author, financial coach, and former top originator, and I'm going to repeat, top originator, Dr. Lynn Richardson. We had the pleasure of working with Dr. Lynn earlier this year to release a series of videos as a part of our A Seat at the Closing Table training series for loan officers. You can view the self-paced series online at freddysf or singlefamily.freddymac.com loan officer training or watch as a refresher. Dr. Lynn, it's so good to have you on Equitably Speaking podcast today. How are you? I am blessed. I am honored. I am excited because we are talking about my absolute first love, and that is home ownership. Home ownership is how I started in the financial services industries. Uh, and like yourself, I am also a real tour, a real test. Yes. Uh, but I am also a certified uh, loan originator, continuing education provider. I am a licensed investment advisor. I'm a licensed insurance professional. Um, I'm a licensed tax coach. So I help home buyers, and particularly those who are in underserved communities, understand how to get their entire financial house in order. Uh, in this episode, we want to be able to offer practical tips to mortgage professionals who want to create a sustainable, sustainable book of business with borrowers and underserved communities of color. And you are the perfect uh, person to help them do that. So if you are a loan officer and you wanted to introduce yourself to a real estate agent, what would you say? You know, this is this can be tricky because in many cases, when we want to connect with someone, we're thinking, how can it benefit me? That's just the truth. I'm going out, I'm connecting with a real estate agent, I'm connecting with an individual or an, a professional um, because I want to ensure that I can provide a service. And at the end of that thought, at the end of that statement, I'm thinking to myself, what can it do for me? But here's the truth. And this is the method that I've always used. If I'm going to connect with a real estate agent, I'm going to offer what I can do for you. So all of my scripting is going to focus on you. All of my scripting is going to focus on the real estate professional. We would like to think that showing our credentials first Hi, I'm Lynn Richardson and I've helped so many people buy homes and I used to help people in Chicago and I used to help people in New York and now I live in Los Angeles and I can help your people too and we can close homes together and blah, 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 blah. That's what everyone say. Yeah. yeah but if yeah. you go to that real estate professional and you say, I see that you've been working in this community for the past 10 years. I see that you've been licensed and you've never had a violation. I see you going to community events and home buyer seminars and home buyer workshops. And I see that you have been successful in those areas, but I have something that I can do to help you be even more successful. Did you know that there are buyers who are in this kind of situation or people who are in post COVID situations or those who are first time home buyers or newly new graduates or, uh, or that the housing market in your particular area has done this. 
Here's what I can do to help you tap into more customers. When you approach a real estate professional, telling them what you can do to help them, as opposed to displaying what they need to know about you so they can help you, what you do is you turn the tables and you provide more opportunities for people to have a seat at the closing table. Because eventually what's going to happen by you sharing with that real estate professional what you can do for them, every script, every email, every communication that you send out should be geared towards what you can do to help them be better. Even if you are at zero, like you, when I started in the mortgage business, I had no experience, no training. I didn't have one customer, but what I had was common sense. And what I had was business acumen. And so I took that common sense and that business acumen and I then made myself available to let people know, you may have loans that have gotten denied. Why don't you let me take a look at them? I think I could turn this around. And in my early years of being in the mortgage business, it's exactly what I did. Use your originality, but also use your common sense and your business acumen and offer that to other professionals so that then they will see you as a value added part of their entire business. I like that. And I really appreciate the way you just flip the script. So thank you for that, Dr. Lynn. Um, I also think that uh, with, you know, your knowledge base and the compassion that you have and show um, to be able to to share um, in terms of what you're offering with your partners um, can also help. Right. So, for example, Freddie Mac has several mortgage programs that can help borrowers get into a home with as little as three percent down. You still have a lot of people thinking that it takes 20 percent down to uh, to get into a home. Um, we've got our home possible home one and HFA advantage programs, just to name a few. We talked a little earlier about a little earlier about uh, building a sustainable book of business. Right. I mean, because this industry is like a p- pendulum. It just swings back and forth, back and forth. And they're on years and they're off years, uh, sometimes even in months. And in the past year, you know, we've had the interest rate has been raised over 10 times. The Federal Reserve raised interest rates and then there's inflation. There's all these things. Right. But we still have our business to do. And a part of that is building a pipeline, right? So what would you say, whether it's, and this may not be as much of a script as it is just providing some guidance in in terms of building your pipeline and sustaining your pipeline and making sure that you see that pipeline through, um, how can a loan officer develop a, a, an organic connection with a potential home buyer who's not yet ready until the time when they are ready? What are some of the things that you do, would do? So, This is an excellent question. And once again, it goes back to serving, providing what it is that you have available to serve and educating. Instead of looking at the borrower as this is someone I can help them get a home and then I can make a commission or, you know, increase my salary or whatever it is. What can you do to actually serve that borrower? This has happened so many times in the business, but I'm going to speak specifically when interest rates increased from 2003 to 2004. 2003, we were in a refinance market. Everybody who was in the business was doing exceptionally well. And then 2004, interest rates increased. Everybody who was in the top 10 a loan originator group in my company and across the country, none of those people were still there. I was the only one still there. I was still in a top 10 top 10 of my company even after interest rates increased because I had a pipeline. I had a pop pipeline of mortgage seekers and I treated it much like an incubator. In the incubator, you keep everybody the chicklets warm and then when they're born, they're mm-hmm. in a safe environment and then when those uh eggs mm-hmm. hatch, You've got full grown, healthy chiclets. Well, mm-hmm. I did the same thing with my borrowers. Some people came to me and couldn't get a mortgage. Maybe they didn't have enough time on the job. Maybe they had a credit issue. Maybe there had been a bankruptcy, an interruption of income. But I kept those borrowers in the incubator and I never abandoned them. Now, here's the issue. You can't talk to everybody every day. 
We only have 24 hours in a day. And in that 24 hours, you've got to use your time, but more importantly, your energy. You see, energy is more important than time. Energy is like money in the bank. Once you spend it, it's gone. It's gone. You don't get it back. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. your energy and what you are doing with the eight to 12 hours you're working (laughs) as an originator, if you're full time, and for many of us, it was eight to 16 hours a day of working. Mm -hmm. What you do with your energy during that time is important. You cannot speak to a thousand consumers that are in your incubator and speak to the eight or nine consumers who are closing in a week or two at the same time. There's no way to do it. But in the incubator, there's an automated email that goes out once a week. In the incubator, there are different topics. Are you dealing with budgeting? Are you dealing with credit? Did your credit score increase or decrease? Um, Do you need to pay down your debt? There are things that you can say to people in the incubator to help them in their regular business life or financial journey while they are getting ready to buy a home. Also in the incubator, offer once a month, once a week, just a QA, and a a 30 minute Q&A with 500 people, a thousand people, or 10,000 people in your incubator can go a long way. Because let me tell you what else is happening. You're building a relationship. No one else is doing this. No one else is reaching out to say, hey, I want to help you, even though you're not going to buy a house right now today. During that Q&A, one of the beautiful things about Q&As is one person asks a question, but a hundred others were thinking it. One person asked a question, but 2,000 of the people may have been too embarrassed to ask that question. So now you answer one question that can help dozens or potentially hundreds or thousands of people, and now you looked at as an expert. So they may be in the incubator three months, six months, nine months, a year, two years. The question that I ask you as a loan originator is, do you want that customer today? Do you want that customer in three months? Do you want that customer in three years? Or do you want that customer in five years? The answer is all of the above. I want that customer whenever they think about buying a home, I want them to call me. So you've got to figure out ways to communicate with as many people with as little time and energy as possible. So if I communicate with a thousand people at one time on a virtual webinar, a home buyer seminar, a credit uh, workshop at the same time that I am giving my best value and I'm being much more efficient with my time and my energy. So now I've got time and energy to handle all the other areas of my business and my life. And that needs to be set up like a military style. What's your schedule? How do you, what does your day look like? What does your week look like? What does your month look like? Stick to a system. You'll hear me talk. You hear me talk a lot in the videos about systems. Stick to the system and the and the system will support you as you grow and sustain your business. Since we're talking about underserved communities, Dr. Lynn, I wanted to take a minute to discuss uh, some of the cultural sensitivities that loan officers should be aware of uh, it, with speaking with buyers in underserved communities. How do you... Um, how, how would you share with a loan officer to take that special care, to have that type of um, com- compassion for humanity when doing a business deal, business deal that to know that this is more than just a transaction and to be able to respect the culture that um, that that person that they're dealing with comes from? How do you kind of navigate that? This is an excellent question, and it's one that I have been faced with and dealt with. Uh, since the the very first day I ever did one single loan. And the first thing that I would say is to do not judge any book by its cover. It doesn't matter what you think about what you see. It doesn't matter if the person in front of you is black, brown, yellow. It doesn't matter. Treat every single individual like a human being and have an objective process that allows you 
to learn about the individual in front of you. What I should do is stick to my script. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. To my script. Go back to the script and ask the same questions of everyone. What is your name? What is your social security number? What is your nationality? What is, oh, okay. Um, When did you, how, are you a U.S. citizen? When you ask those questions in the script, you will get the answers that will tell you where to go next. Now, one of the interesting things about being a loan originator, it's it's sometimes like being an attorney. You don't know question number six until you ask question number five. If you ask question number five and you find out at question number five that the person has only been on their job for one month, then question number six is going to be, okay, what did you do before that? If you ask in question number five, how long have you been on your job? And they say 20 years, then question number six is different. So in the same way that I'm saying be objective and stick to the script, I'm then also saying Start with the scripted questions and then let the answers lead you from there. But when you get an answer, now it's time for education. What did I say earlier? It's time to put that common sense and that business acumen together. Let me give you an example of a cultural issue that still happens in some places. When I came into the mortgage business, when I became a loan originator, it was the customary standard to document rental history one of two ways, cancel checks or a letter from the management company. That was it. You had to show cancel checks or money orders or a letter from the management company. Well, if you live on 79th and Ashland in Chicago and you've been living and renting for 10 years, and you live on the third floor of a three flat building. Miss Jackson lives on the first floor and she's the landlord and she doesn't take checks. Mm -hmm. (laughs) She only takes cash. That's a cultural issue in a particular kind of community. She does not take uh, checks. If you talk to any of the, uh, you know, elderly, uh, Property managers, in many cases, they only take cash. Well, then the mortgage company wants a letter from a management company, but it's not managed by a managed company, management management company. So I had to show that a letter from Ms. Jackson is equivalent to a letter from a property management company in Hoffman Estates, where the building is managed by a professional firm. That's a cultural difference. And we have to be sensitive to the cultural difference. But what I'm not going to say to my African-American or my Latina borrower is as soon as they come to the door, does your landlord live on the first floor? I'm not going to ask that question. I'm going to ask the proper questions. What do you pay for rent? How do you pay your rent? And then if I see something that could prohibit the borrower from getting into a home, then I'm going to educate them on the tools or the documentation that they need for their particular scenario. So, yes. So let's talk about myths and fears and block busting some of those myths. Uh, You know, people believe all sorts of things out there because they have a tendency to trust each other and their friends as opposed to kind of like industry experts. So how do you overcome uh, some of these myths that that potential borrowers have? So the first thing that I always do when I want to overcome myths is I'm the one to bring them up first. I bring them up first. Okay. I have a whole list. Myths versus truths. Well, you have a list. I have a whole list. <laughs> you have a list. Okay. Yeah. We'll want that list. <laughs> yeah. I have a whole list. And mm-hmm. whenever I start and I do to this day, I still have a webinar that many originators use called the Road to Home Ownership. I start out with the myths. The myths, you can only buy a house with an 800 credit score. You can only, you know, uh, if you're the higher your credit score, the lower your interest rate. That's a myth. That's not always the case. 
In some kinds of mortgages, that's the case. But in other types of mortgages, it's not. Um, Private mortgage insurance is going to prevent me from getting like all these different myths. So I just address them up front. Because if I bring the issue to you, then what I'm doing is I'm showing one, that I'm aware. Two, I'm showing that I am present. Uh, Three, I'm showing that I care. And four, I'm showing that I am knowledgeable. So I'm going to address them first. We know that a loan officer's relationship with a client doesn't stop at the closing table. Right. We want to get a seat at the closing table, but we also want to uh, continue to uh, build a relationship with our clients. Can you provide some tips on how to stay connected with your clients after closing day? Absolutely. Remember, I talked about that incubator. Yes. Yes. That incubator yes. where I've home. got <laughs> new home buyers waiting to hatch <laughs> on any given day. Well, the incubator continues after the closing. So the communication after closing is post-closing lifestyle and financial management communication. Uh, check in for 30 days, 60 days. Uh, what about the half-year check-in? What about the one-year annual maintenance checkup? If a car needs to be tuned every so often, then so does someone's financial life and certainly their home, one year after they've closed, do you have a questionnaire that says, "Do you did your income change? Um, is there anything different in your financial scenario that is ca- giving you more access to financial power or less access to financial power? What about the condition of your home? You got an appraisal and a home inspection when you bought it. If you live in a climate where the uh, weather is brutal during the wintertime, Did you get another checkup? You want to make sure that you check these things, the systems in your home before they break down so that you don't have to deal with an emergency after they break down. There's a multitude of things to talk to your buyer about after they close. Why? Because most people will not live in the same house for 30 years. Most people, that's not what's going to happen. At some point, they may buy a new home. They may relocate. They may buy investment property and you want to make sure you're a part of that person's life and not just there for one transaction. So keep that incubator going after the closing. Appreciate that, that Dr. Lynn. Uh, Freddie Mac also has some helpful resources, including the Black Wealth Toolkit and the Wealth Building Toolkit for Latino homeowners, because once they get in their home, we want them to think about building wealth and gener- generational wealth as well. So we're going to add those links to the to the description So Dr. Lynn, Dr. Lynn, Dr. Lynn, this has been such an informative episode of Equitably Speaking. You've shared practical, common sense, and sometimes humorous tips on life scripting with loan officers seeking to break into an underserved community of color or those who are seeking to expand their existing business with minority borrowers. One last thing, a quick rapid fire. What is the one piece of advice you wish to you wish you had when you started out in the mortgage industry? The one piece of advice that I wish I had when I started out in the mortgage industry is that I can do much better with a team than I can alone. It takes teamwork to make the dream work. So a couple of months into the business, I hired my first assistant, even though I only had one closing and I really couldn't afford it. What I realized is If my assistant did all the copying and questioning and asking and the administrative things that I could go out and be in my highest and best use the great majority of the time. So teamwork makes the dream work. I love it. And thank you for sharing how people can win with Dr. Lynn. Uh, So (laughs) thank you so much for joining us. Tell our listeners how they can uh, get in contact with you or or keep keep it or or keep in touch with you uh, with your videos and such. Go to asklin.org so we can stay connected. You can ask me a question. I'll put you in my incubator. That's how you get in my incubator. And follow me on all social media at Lynn Richardson. This concludes today's episode of Equitably Speaking, a podcast series that teaches mortgage professionals how to expand their portfolio and close more loans for borrowers in underserved communities. 
To learn more about how to expand your portfolio and close the homeownership gap for borrowers in communities of color, visit sf.freddiemac.com forward slash LO training to start your A Seat at the Closing Table learning journey today. If you enjoyed this episode, and I truly hope you did, rate it. Hit the subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss another episode and share it with your colleagues. Thank you so much for listening.